Hi everyone, welcome to part four of my Z80 computer series. In the last video, we were looking at an output device which enabled us to separate out our output data from the rest of the information that was happening on the data bus. So it was a little bit easier to see our actual output. As you can see, I've been working on this board here and I've actually set up um, two more identical circuits so we can actually have three output devices now. I will just mention I've swapped out the 7805 voltage regulator for a 2 amp version so it's now a 78S05. Um, this one was getting a little hot, I haven't got a heat sink on here yet and these chips actually uh, draw quite a lot of current um, well, the, the driver chips drive quite a lot of current to the LEDs. Um, possibly a little bit of a mistake to use these chips because they do use a lot of power. So as you can see, the green LEDs over here are, are counting down. We're running the normal program that we've been running up till now. So it's just counting down from FF to zero. And these lines at the top here, there's actually three. I'll just unplug that one so you can see that one as well. These are the latch lines. And as I've unplugged it, the program's still running, but it's no longer latching the data. Now I've got three. I've got one for each of our output devices we've got here. And we can see that when we connect up the latch lines, connect up this one, and this one starts counting. Um, this is connected to the output enable or the um, IO request line, I think it's the correct name for it. Um, so what I wanna do next is look at the addressing of the IO devices, of, in particular the output devices that we've got here. Now, my program is running an instruction called out C, B, and the C register holds the address of the output device that we're writing to. Currently, the program is just setting that to zero, but we can change that. We can um, specify the address of the output device that we want to write to. Um, so the way I'm gonna set it up, I'm gonna have this is output device zero, this one will be device one, and this one will be device two. Um, so all we need to do is load that into the register C before we um, run the output command, or the out instruction. Now we'll need to figure out how we can um, connect up these three lines. What we need to do is look at the address lines, which are the, the green wires over here. We need to look at the bottom three lines. Um, technically we only need two, but I'm gonna set this up with three. Um, and we need to decode the address and enable the relevant one of these um, latch lines, depending on which address has been specified in register C. Now to do that, I'm going to use a new chip called a 328 decoder. So it takes three input lines, which will be our three address lines, and it will decode that into a number. Um, with three address lines, three bits, we can specify a number between zero and seven. So it actually gives us eight different output lines. That's why it's called a 328 decoder. It takes three bits of input and decodes that into eight possible outputs. And it will just drive one of the outputs low depending on what those three input bits are set to. Let's take a quick look at a schematic diagram of um, these chips that I've got connected here and we'll see the 328 decoder and see how that works. So I've drawn a schematic up here in uh, EasyEDA and you can see I've got these seven segment LEDs and they're arranged in three pairs and we've got a pair here, another pair here, and another pair here, all being with their respective driver chips. Now, these are the 
three lines that I'm interested in, these three enable lines, you can see I've got the, the LE latch enable um, connected together on each pair. So there's one there and then there's another one here. And then finally there's one up there on the third set. And they just connect together and then they run down here into this 328 um, decoder. So this is a 74HC138. So I'll just refer to that as the 138 chip. Um, so we've got three output lines technically coming out of this chip. One here, one here and one here. And they just run into the, the latch lines on it on each of our DM9368 chips. So there's the three address lines coming in, A0, A1 and A2. So we only need to look at the bottom three lines of the address bus. And this chip will decode those three lines and it will drive one of its outputs low depending on um, the value of those, those three input lines. So if they're all low, they're all set to, that will give us zero then it will actually drive the Y0 line low, which would be this one, and it would be this pair of LEDs that would um, latch the data. If these are set to a one, then it will be this line driven low, the Y1 line, and it will be this pair of LEDs that will latch the data. And then finally, if we set it to a two, um, we'll get Y2 will go low, and it will be the, the final pair of LEDs that will latch the line that will latch the data. Um, you can see we've got our data bus here, all seven, all eight bits of the data bus. Um, the thick green line on the diagram represents the data bus. And you can see with each pair of driver chips, we've got the bottom four bits, D0, 1, 2, and 3, going into one chip. And then the, the top four bits, D4, 5, 6, and 7, going into the other chip. There is a couple more things worth mentioning or a couple more connections worth mentioning. Um, we want this to only work when the IO request line from the Z80 is low. So that's the, this connection here, IORQ, the little hash symbol represents its active low. So I've connected that to one of the enable lines on this chip. This chip actually has three enable lines. Um, they're shown here as uh, G hash 2A, G hash 2B and G1. Um, I think sometimes you see different numberings, but essentially there's three enable lines and two of them are active low and one is active high. Um, the hash represents the active low. This one doesn't have a hash, so it's active high. Now I've just pulled that one high, so it's permanently high. And then the other two, I'm driving low with these two lines here, um, IO request and write. So this chip will actually only be active um, when the Z80 is trying to write to an IO request. So it's got write and IO request. So essentially an IO output. Um, and that's about it for the, um, the connections. So what I'll do is I will um, get the uh, 74 HC138 chip soldered onto this board. Um, I'm not going to do it on the breadboard because um, it's already getting a bit messy over here and I want to gradually start transferring stuff from the breadboard onto this more permanent board. So I'm going to put the 138 chip on here and I'll get these three wires connected into it and we will also need the IO request and the right line connected in as well. But I'll build that up and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've soldered on the decoder chip here and the latch lines from each of these three pairs are now connected into three of the outputs on this chip. I've connected up three of the address lines. That's th these three blue wires here. They're the bottom three address lines, A0, A1 and A2. So they're providing the input to this chip. And then these two white wires here are the enable lines. So they're the enable lines for the decoder chip. And one of them is connected to the right line on the Z80. And the other one is connected to the IO request line. 
So this chip will only be enabled when we, we've got a write and an IO request at the same time. So let's power it up. And yep, this, this is counting down. So it's running our original program, just counting down from FF to zero. And because I've loaded zero into the C register, um, it's always outputting to IO address zero, which is this pair here. So the next step would be to update the program in the EEPROM to actually start outputting to all three of the um, IO addresses. So let's take a look at that new program. I'll explain what this program does and then we'll look at it line by line. So what this is going to do is we're going to start dumping out the contents of our memory. So we're going to start at memory address zero. We're going to dump out the contents of memory address zero. Then we'll move to memory address one and dump out the contents of that. And then we'll go to address two and dump out the contents and so on. So we'll start dumping the memory onto those LED displays. So let's look at this line by line. First thing I'm doing is loading hexadecimal 0000, zero, zero, zero into the 16-bit register pair HL. So that's opcode 21 is load HL. And then this is what we're actually going to be loading in, just zeros. Now the next line we've got this loop label. Now we can ignore it. Um, that's just a an instruction for the compiler to know what we're which line we're referring to when we're referring back to it down the bottom here. Um, but as I'm compiling by hand, that's just a, really a note for myself. Um, and then we're loading register B with the contents of memory address zero because when we see these brackets. We're talking about the contents of an address. Because this is a load instruction, we're referring to a memory address. And it's the memory address that is being pointed to by the HL register pair, which is currently zero. So we're loading the contents of memory address zero into register B. And that instruction is opcode 46. Um, that is load B comma HL. Then we're loading register C with a zero. So that is opcode zero E for load C. And then this is what we're gonna load in, just a zero. Next, we're gonna output to address C, the contents of memory, uh, the contents of register B. So C holds zero, so we're gonna output to address zero whatever is in register B, which is actually the contents of our memory address, um, our first memory address, which is zero at the moment. So that is actually an extended um, instruction. So it takes two bytes of memory. Um, so it's ED41 is out C comma B. Next, we're gonna inc C. So that's increment C. So now C will hold a one. That's opcode 0C is inc C. And then we're going to output to address C, which is now uh, address 1, because we just incremented it. Um, we're going to put out the contents of uh, register L. Now register L, again, will currently be holding 0 because that's what we loaded into the, the register pair. Um, so that's, again, um, an extended instruction. So it's two bytes. Uh, ED69 is out C comma L. And then we're going to ink C again. So it's again, that's zero C. We've already seen that. Um, so C will now hold the number two. So we're going to output to address two, output to IO address two, contents of H which again is currently zero because that's where we're starting from. Um, again, it's an extended instruction, so that's ED61. Um, finally, we're gonna increment HL. So now we're gonna start looking at memory address one because we've incremented it from zero to a one. 
um, that's a single byte so that's 23 is ink HL and then we're gonna jump relative JR is jump relative back to this loop which is up here um, so jump relative is opcode 18 and there's F2 I've calculated this in my head I hope I've got this correct it's the only thing I'm not 100% sure about um, I believe um, F2 is going to take us back up to the loop um, that's a, a signed um, two's complement binary number I think is the correct terminology um, so it's a negative number so it's going to jump backwards up to here and then it's just going to repeat so HL now has address 1 so we're going to start dumping out the contents of address 1 and we'll loop round to address 2 dump out the contents of address 2 and so on now when you think about it the contents of uh, memory address 0 because that's where we're starting from is actually um, this number here it's our very first byte of our program um, so as we start dumping out the contents of the memory we're actually going to be dumping out these numbers here so we should start to see our address which is going to be on the red LEDs and should start at zero and, and gradually increment um, and the green LED should start to display this program so it should display 2 1 and then 0 0 and 0 0 and then 4 6 and then 0e and so forth should start dumping out this program eventually um, we'll get down to here and it will probably just start dumping out ff because that's probably what's in the uh, memory so I'll get this loaded onto the EEPROM and we'll cross our fingers and run it and hope it works okay so the moment of truth let's turn it on You never quite be sure what's going to happen when you first power on. I think it's because we probably need to hold the reset line down for a little while on power up. Um, I'll just give it a reset. And there we go, 21 in address 0. And then we get 0 in address 1. and also zero in address two. 46 in address three. So it looks like it's working. It's maybe not quite as impressive as I was expecting, but it does work. It is doing what I've programmed it to do. Um, the main point was to demonstrate that we can control um, each pair of uh, LEDs separately because they are now separate IO devices with their own addresses. This one's got address one. This is Sorry, this one's got address 0, this one's got address 1, and this one's got address 2. Now, it is a little unfortunate because of how slow it's running. We're not really getting a good demonstration of a um, IO address 2, this one on the end here, because it's always 0. It would eventually get there, but we'd have to sit here for a long time running at this speed. But yeah, I think it's um, achieved what I wanted. So that's progress. So I think we'll leave this video here. Um, what I want to do next really is to transfer all of the stuff over on the breadboard here and get it onto this, this board so it's a, just a little easier to work with this. And I could label up the uh, LEDs so that you could see a little bit more clearly what they're doing. Um, and then I think the next step is going to be to add a RAM chip. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. That really does help me out. And if you want to see more of this stuff, consider subscribing to the channel.